Hi there, welcome back. As promised, today I will show you how to create the showcase zoom effect with Fusion tools in DaVinci Resolve 18. If you haven't seen the previous video of the showcase zoom effect, you can find the link in the description, or click the link up here on the screen. Before we move on to the Fusion tutorial, I want to introduce some new features I added to this effect template. In the inspector, a new option is added to change the pop-up to ellipse. We can change the size of shape easily with the Fusion overlay controls in the viewer. This new circle button beside the ellipse option is used to change the showcase to a circle. This button also works in the rectangle mode, which automatically adjusts the height and corner radius to change the shape to a circle. Also a color wheel control is now available for changing the color in the showcase pop-up. Another change is adding the option to link showcase to the source position. Check the link source option, now the showcase pop-up is tied to the source center and it looks like a magnifier. For example in this clip, a person is walking on the beach. Move the adjustment clip over above the second clip. Move playhead to the beginning, change the source center. Mark a keyframe for the source center parameter. Go to the end of the clip. Move the source center to follow the person walking. A new keyframe is added at the current place. Now the showcase window is following the man walking. We can also adjust the showcase offset so that it won't cover the source image. Or use the on-screen control to make the adjustment. If the motion is not easy for keyframing, we can use a Fusion Tracker tool to track the movement. Click this button to open the effect in the Fusion page. Select the Effect Group node. Make sure the playhead is at the beginning. Go to the inspector and right-click the source center parameter, choose Modify with Tracker Position. Adjust the tracker position to include the person. Go to the Modifiers tab. Press the Track Forward button to start tracking. Play the clip after the tracking is complete. The showcase window is now following the person. And thanks to Mark Allen who pointed out a new feature in DaVinci Resolve version 18.1, we don't need the adjustment clip for applying effect on a portion of a clip. Instead, we create a generator macro, simply drag it to the timeline above the clip, and we have the effect applied to the clip for the only part the generator is overlaying. This not only avoids an extra step to apply the effect, but also saves one click in the inspector. The parameters are now showing as the first tab in the inspector. All the settings are exactly like we see in the effect version and have the same behavior. This is great, but I did find a little thing here. If we move this generator to another clip, it keeps the cache of the previous one. This might be a bug, since it's a very new feature. I hope it will be fixed soon. Here is a workaround to address this. Just resize a little bit of the source dimension, it will reprocess the image. I can live with that for now. Both the effect and generator templates are included in the new download, the link is in the description as usual. All right. We've demonstrated the new changes in the template. Now let's get started with the Fusion composition. Right-click the clip and choose Open in Fusion page. A Media In and Media Out nodes are already there in the node editor. The basic idea of making this effect is we define a source area and a target position, zoom the source image to the target with some animation effects. Drag a mat control from the toolbar and move over to the connection line, release the button when the line is highlighted, this inserts the mat control node after the median in node. 
Add a rectangle mask from the toolbar to the node editor, connect to the mat controls garbage mat input in grey colour. If you are not sure which one is the garbage mat input, you can hold the option or alt key while dragging the rectangle's output to the mat control node. Release the button and you see a list of the inputs, select garbage mat. We see the center part is cut out in the viewer, we need to invert the selection. Select the mat control and go to the inspector. Expand the garbage mat section. Enable the invert option. This is good. We can now use the rectangle node to define the size and center of the source area. Press F2 or right click and choose rename in the menu, rename the node to source. Next, we will create a way to set the target point. Add a transform node to the editor. Rename it to showcase. We will use it to define the zoom size and target point. For example, set the size to 2. Enable the dual viewer mode and bring the media in node into the left viewer where we can check and adjust the source area. Now let's drag another transform node and insert it between the mat control and media out. Rename it to showcase zoom. This will transform the image from source to target based on the definition. In the inspector, enter the equal sign into the size field, which enables the simple expression for the field. Enter showcase.size as the expression. It did the zoom, but the result is not applied to the source. Modify the pivot with a simple expression, which links the pivot to the source center. The zoom is now correct, but still not in the target point. Go back to the showcase zoom node. We modify the center point with an expression as shown on the screen. This sets the image center to a new position controlled by the offset from source to target. Select the source node, change source on the left viewer. The result in the right viewer changes as well. We now have the source, target and zooming part completed, but the main image is missing. Add a merge node to the editor. Branch out the median's output and connect to the merge as background input. Disconnect the showcase zoom from media out and connect it to the foreground input of the merge node. Connect the merge node to media out. Both the original image and showcase are now displayed together on the screen but they are L not very clearly separated, we will add border and shadow to the pop-up. Add a background to the editor. Change the color to white. Rename it to border color. With the border color node selected, click the rectangle button in the toolbar. A rectangle node is added to the border color as the effect mask input. Press F2 or right-click to rename the node to Showcase Border. Merge the border color with the Showcase Zoom node. Make sure the Showcase Border node is selected and uncheck the solid option in the inspector. Increase the border width to 0.006. Modify the center, width and height with simple expressions shown on the screen. The border is now positioned properly and attached to the showcase window. To add the shadow effect, select Merge to node. Press Shift space to bring up the tool selection window. Find and add a drop shadow node after the Merge to. Great, we have done the showcase effect setup. Select the showcase node, we can now relocate the showcase window. Or change the showcase size. But what about the zoom animation? In the template, we can enable animation with a number of frames and the source image will zoom into the target automatically. To do that, we first create two user controls in the showcase node to define the number of frames and the animation curve. 
Right-click the Showcase node, select Edit Controls. In the Edit Control window, enter the name, Animation in Time. Set the Input Control to Slider Control. Set the default to 15, and range from 1 to 100. Press OK to confirm. A user tab is enabled in the inspector. The control we just created is available there. Repeat the step to create another control, animation in size. With the range set from 0 to 1. Go to the inspector, right click the animation size, and choose modify with anim curves. Switch to the modifiers tab. Change the source to duration. Set the curve to easing. The Anim Curve modifier will dynamically set the value from 0 to 1 as the clip plays from beginning to the end. We will use the dynamic value to control the zooming process. Select the Showcase Zoom node. Change the size expression to Showcase Size multiplied by the animation size. This dynamically changes the size from 0 to 2, which is the size we defined in the Showcase node. It runs very slow since the animation is running through the entire duration. Go back to the Showcase node. In the Modifiers tab, the default time scale is 1, which means it uses the full duration for this animation. If we modify the time scale with the expression shown here, the animation will now run at the speed of almost 20 times faster and complete by the number of frames defined in the other user control. The zoom timing is now correct, but the path is wrong. The source is at the bottom, but the zooming animation is from the center. Select the Showcase Zoom node. Change the center expression as shown here. This expression moves the center from the source to the target, as the animation size is changed from 0 to 1. The image zoom animation is now running correctly, but the border is still not moving. Select the Showcase Border node, and change the center expression, so that it moves dynamically from the source center to the showcase point. Also change the expressions of the width and height, so that the border size is dynamically calculated based on animation value. OK, everything is in sync now. There are still many other little things in the final template. It will be too much to show all the pieces in this tutorial. We have covered the most important techniques used to make the effect. You can always download the template and check the details in the Fusion page for other functions and expressions. Next, we will create a macro from this composition and see how the parameters are exported and used in the edit page. To create an effect macro, we can either select all the nodes or only the nodes in the middle exclude media in and media out. I usually exclude the media in and out nodes for an effect macro, but for this demo I will just select all the nodes for simplicity's sake. Right-click one of the selected nodes, choose macro, create macro. Enter a name for the macro, for example, Showcase Zoom Tutorial. Select Parameter Center, Width, and Height from the Source node, change the name to Source Center. In the Showcase node, uncheck the output, since the node is only used for settings. Select the Center and Size parameter, change the Center to Showcase Center. In the User section, select the User Control Animation in Time, we will need this to set the animation length. From the Anim Curves node, check the Ease In and Ease Out. Change the name to Curve. In the Border Color node, check the Basic Color parameters. And change the name to Border Color. Select the Border Width from the Showcase Border node. And the last one is the Shadow Strength from the Drop Shadow node. Choose Save as Group from the Option menu. Save the macro to the Effect Template folder, as shown on the screen. Close the Macro Editor, and go back to the Edit page.
Drag a new clip from the medial pool to the timeline. Add an adjustment clip. You might need to restart DaVinci Resolve if the template is not there yet. Apply the newly saved effect template to the adjustment clip. We now have a showcase zoom effect working as expected. Go to the effects tab in the inspector. The parameters we selected earlier are all showing here. And we can use them to adjust the effects. If you want to know more about grouping and organizing the parameters, you can check out this video up here. The link is also available in the description below. All right. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.